12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. We start off with breaking news. San Antonio police currently involved in a standoff situation on the far northwest side of the city. This all started around 730 this morning and our Sarah Costa is live there at the scene and has the very latest. Now, Sarah, where exactly are you and what's going on? Hey, good morning, guys. We're in Leon Valley. We're actually at a command post. Uh, right now off of Hebner near Bandera down the street for reports from the shots fired came in and we are here with Leon Valley police who are waiting for information from SAPD but we were actually near that scene earlier so let me show you video from what we saw earlier this morning again we are still waiting for information from SAPD at this time but we were the police were called out just before 8 a.m. for reports of shots fired in the 7000 block of weathered post street. This is a neighborhood off of Hebner near Bandera and Leon Valley. Now, whether police were at the scene when those shots were fired is still not confirmed. We are also hearing reports that police have a suspect barricaded inside the home. Again, we are still waiting for confirmation. Now, we did speak with a neighbor who told us he heard one loud shot that he said sounded like a shotgun, then followed by seven to 10 consecutive shots. Right after that, he said he saw several first responders arrive on scene. So this is the command post about down the street off of Hebner. Again, Leon Valley, uh, as, uh, Leon Valley police are here, Leon Valley fire are here. SAPD is on the scene. They are all working together. And as soon as we have information, we will bring you those updates. Back to you guys. Thank you, Sarah. Taking a look outside with live cam, we're in the mid 60s right now. It's looking pretty nice out there. Which means it was in the 50s in the Hill Country this morning, Justin. Mm -hmm. Fantastic start. Just what we hoped for. You know, the sad part is it doesn't last very long. Once that sun comes up, temperatures really do start to jump up. We're already jumping up close to 70 now, but it was nice earlier. Uh, right now, 69 degrees at the airport, 67 New Valley, 59 still in Kerrville, so that's still a nice number. 68 New Braunfels and 66 in Gonzales. Next few days, well, you'll notice not much changes here. We're going to be around 90 really all the way through the weekend, so you can expect those kind of afternoon temperatures with lots of sun in our forecast. And I mentioned the, the numbers right now in the 60s and still some 50s, Bandera 57, 65 right now, Hondo 66 in Gonzales. There's a look at the pollen count. Not the greatest counts today. 1,740 for mold. It jumps up into the high category. Fall elm, ragweed, still moderate levels, and grass is low. So we had four allergens today showing up. Your forecast, right around 90. Sounding like a broken record here. Northerly winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. And we're really starting to lose daylight as we get closer uh, into fall and get it towards winter. We're going to talk more about how much daylight we're going to lose to the month of October coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. Hey, thank you, Justin. And while the weather may have been a nice start, uh, traffic has just been a nightmare this Tuesday. Taking a look right now at I-10 at Frio, we do have a situation going on that's causing some big backups, but this is not the only crash that we've been tracking throughout the morning. Take a look right here at our map. I-37 northbound at Cesar Chavez Boulevard. That crash has been there for a little while, but we're seeing some of the buildup there in those northbound lanes of 37, obviously causing a headache for drivers. Uh, Texas website does list a crash there off I-10 westbound at New Braunfels Avenue, seeing a buildup in those westbound lanes as well. Uh, taking another jump right over here, though, to I-10 eastbound at Colorado Street. We do have a buildup of traffic happening there as well. It is a cluster of crashes basically near and around the downtown area. US-90 eastbound at I-35 looks like that situation could be improving. We're seeing a little bit of yellow out there, so that is a good sign. Uh, not too far down from there, though, US-90 eastbound at the entrance lane of State Highway 151. There was a crash detected there. Taking a wider look at the map, though, you can see that we do have a number of issues out there on the roadway but thankfully it's not looking as red or green or yellow that is as we saw a little bit earlier so it means that traffic is picking up and it is moving but we're going to be watching these situations closely throughout the morning so make sure you stay with us for all those latest updates mark stephanie thank you Stephen. let's look at today's nine at nine Parts of Southern California are under a state of emergency this morning as crews scramble to contain a massive oil spill. Officials are looking into whether a ship's anchor may have struck a pipeline on the ocean floor, causing the leak of crude oil. A new rapid COVID test is now available after getting FDA approval Monday. Health officials say the kit will double at-home testing capacity in the coming weeks. Officials say cases are dropping nationwide, but the death rate in the U.S. is nearly eight times higher compared to mid-July. 
President Biden is in Michigan this morning promoting his $3.5 trillion budget bill and $1 trillion infrastructure package. The U.S. is on track to default on the national debt in less than two weeks. If lawmakers can't pass the budget bill by October 18th, it would trigger the first U.S. default in modern history. Facebook whistleblower Francis Haugen is scheduled to testify before a Senate committee Tuesday with the hopes that lawmakers will rein in the social media giant. Haugen says Facebook knows it can spread hate, promote violence, and spread misinformation. The company disagrees with Haugen's claims. Today, the FDA is laying out two new rules tobacco companies need to provide to get FDA approval. One rule applies mainly to electronic nicotine delivery systems, including e-cigarettes. The other mostly applies to two new cigarettes, smokeless tobacco, cigars, roll your own, and hookah tobacco products. The rules take effect in a month. A Russian film crew is in space this morning filming the first ever movie shot in space. The crew will spend 12 days filming on the International Space Station. Cosmonauts on the ISS will also appear in the movie, which is currently titled The Challenge. Amazon is the latest retailer to try and get shoppers in the holiday buying mood, announcing early Black Friday deals. Companies like Target, Pottery Barn and Ulta Beauty have already rolled out holiday shopping discounts. The $699 million Powerball is no longer up for grabs. A winning ticket was sold in California. Six other tickets matched five white balls and will get prizes worth $1 to $2 million. And Snickers is out with a new flavor for the fall season. Cinnamon Bun Snickers will be available at Walmart for a limited time starting this month. And that's today's Night at Nine. And according to the latest Bear County Facts case at San Antonio report poll, more people disapprove of Governor Greg Abbott compared to the last report, which was released in March. Now, of, under Governor Greg Abbott's leadership, the legislature has passed controversial laws, including constitutional carry, voting restrictions, and a virtual ban on abortions in the state. KSAT digital journalist Ferris Sabawi joining us again this morning for a closer look at all of this. Good morning, Ferris. Hey, good morning. Nice to join you all. First off, how exactly does Governor Abbott's approval rating compare to the previous Bear Facts surveys? Yeah, well, it's really interesting, Mark. Uh, Bear Facts started uh, actually about a year ago, uh, you know, and one of the first times we polled about the governor was right at the beginning of this pandemic. You saw so much political unity back then. You saw local officials really lined up with Greg Abbott and vice versa. And because of that, Abbott had a really strong approval rating when, when we first started doing these polls. Um, but as politicization has grown and, and as this pandemic has, you know, had politics uh, injected in it, really, uh, you've seen that approval rating start to slip. Uh, this latest poll was taken in September between the 21st and the 27th. And among the 602 voters we talked to, 59 percent of them disapproved of the job Governor Abbott is doing in Texas. So you can see uh, as this pandemic has lingered, as politics has taken effect, uh, sort of that deterioration of that political unity we saw, uh, you know, around this time last year. And Ferris, what other statewide officials were voters polled about? Yeah, they were also asked about Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick and Attorney General Ken Paxton. And those two also voters disapproved of them more than the voters who did approve of them. And I think that's a little bit important because those three have really pay, played a big part in making sure these Republican priorities get passed in the legislature. Mark, like you mentioned a little bit earlier, you know, the Republicans really pushed through some of these uh, controversial measures like the ban on abortion, uh, like the, the voting restrictions bill. Uh, the constitutional carry was a big one. And uh, I think you're starting to see that uh, that type of um, leadership and how it's affecting, uh, you know, Bear County voters opinions. Ferris, how could all these numbers wind up impacting the upcoming elections? Yeah, you know, elections are far, uh, far ways away, but at the same time, the primary is, uh, you know, next year around this time. And really, uh, Governor Abbott and uh, Attorney General Paxton in specific are are really worried about their primary opponents. Um, and that sort of explains why both of them have been trying to make sure 
They're in the headlines more, fighting for these conservative priorities a little more. They want to make sure that there's no room for anybody else to run against them in the primary. The reason that's so important is because conventional wisdom states whoever is going to win this Republican primary will go on to win the office in the general election. So you can tell that, you know, these politicians are going to be taking these ratings seriously and looking at what they can do to even shore up support among Republicans. And Ferris, one final question. So there's a lot to unpack with this latest report. So how can people get at home, find the full report? Yeah, you can go to barefacts.org to find the latest stuff. We're going to have so much coverage on our website on ksat.com. And actually coming up at 10 a.m., Steve Spreester is going to be holding a, a live stream with the pollster who conducted this survey, Dave Metz. They're going to go over all the results. So you can catch that at 10 a.m. Uh, at ksat.com. Hopefully it does not conflict with your chef. All right. In <laughs> case that digital journalist Ferris Sabawi joining us live on GMSA at 9. Thank you so much, Ferris. Thanks, guys. Bye, Ferris. 908, about 69 degrees. Still ahead. Have you heard the term Latinx and wondered why the X? Well, coming up, Alicia Barrera explains where that comes from and why it's here to stay. Tepper's flare is vaccine mandates going to affect for some parts of the country. David Sears had that story coming up in your morning headlines. And welcome back, it's 912. Many times language is reflective of culture and culture is always changing due to societal norms. This evolution affects the way we speak and in some cases, how we identify. In the case of Hispanics and Latinos, there's a term that continues to bring up a lot of discussion and that is Latinx. Alicia Pereira joins us live here in the studio to break down what the term means and why some scholars of Mexican American studies say it is here to stay. Alicia, good morning. Good morning. I'm sure you all have heard of Latinx you bet. by now, right? All right. So some say it's just a phase and it will fade out, but those who study cultures and languages say the term is already evolving. It's clear that the popular term is popular among younger generations. So we spoke to Dr. Lori Rodriguez from Palo Alto College, who said who had a lot to say about Latinx and the power of learning about history and identity. By now, you've probably heard of the term Latinx. Latinx is a, uh, a term that is uh, rooted in the um, Spanish term Latinoamericanos. And um, that's referring to people who are descended from Latin American countries. But what's the X about? So it removes the, the masculine O and the feminine A, and it just removes any kind of gender identifier. Also, we have younger people that are understanding and identifying more with this gender non-binary identity, or at least learning how to be respectful of it. Inclusive, with the exception of being culturally exclusive. The term Hispanic, as opposed to Latinx, it includes people from Spain, which a lot of people who are from the Americas think that that's a really big difference culturally to include a whole different right culture from a different continent. So why is there pushback from older generations? So just exposure and um, familiarity. So the term Hispanic, right, has been used for, for several generations now. And I think that it's because it's so normalized um, in, you know, the educational system, again, right, and in government. Another misconception is that the term defines a person's sexual orientation, which Dr. Rodriguez says is not true. And there are so many more ways people can identify themselves. It ranges from the traditional Hispanic to even just Tejano, Tejanex, Chicano, Chicanex, and many more. Dr. Rodriguez says it is important to do some research on your, on your own and learn about these terms and not just conform to what box has to be checked on those forms. There's always an option to write in however you identify yourself, including on the U.S. Census. And we'll be talking more about this today on KSAT News Now starting at 11. Back to you guys. I always thought it was interesting, uh, the X, I thought for some reason it was like the, the survey, that that was part of it, but you know. Yeah, and yeah. it's all like, it, it's evolving and that's the thing is changing and um, there's a lot of pushback for older generations, my parents included. So it's a lot of teaching even them, you know, at home. So having these conversations just to get more people either on board or at least to learn what's, what it is about. Alicia, do you find it, as, as you dig into this further, are you finding it fascinating personally? Yes, I mean, I myself, so I'm first generation, Mexican-American, so I identify as Mexican-American. So I think it's very interesting to learn about how people identify why as a Tejano instead of a Chicano or Latino. So there's a lot, a lot to dig there and learn about. Thank you, Alicia. Thank you.
Justin is back now with a look at his forecast, and, and I, these are the kinds of maps that I really, really like because it, 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 we're heading into that change of seasons yes. and, and more importantly, the time change too. Yes, nice. November 7th, by the way, is yes. when daylight okay. saving time ends, and we're starting to lose daylight. You may have noticed that our days are getting shorter here, mm -hmm. and I want to show you a map. Now, this was first put out by the National Weather Service. Got to get credit, give credit where credit is due here. Uh, National Weather Service here in Cleveland, and then also uh, uh, National Weather Service, Austin, San Antonio. But here's a look at the loss of daylight in the month of October. As you get into the higher latitudes, you lose about 90 minutes. As you get up towards places like Alaska, it's it's huge difference. Now, as you go south, eh, we lose about 40 minutes here around San Antonio where we're talking about daylight. And the loss of daylight happens more quickly as we transition from summer to winter. So take a look at the sunrise October 1st, 727. Sunset is 719. Once we get to October 31st, the sunrise is at 746 and the sunset is at 648. So really starting to transition there. And uh, temperatures this morning felt a little bit fall like 54 Bernie stage, 54 Kerrville, 60 in New Braunfels, 59 Randolph, 61 in Pleasanton, 55 Carrizo Springs, 66 out in Del Rio. So really, really nice start. The problem is once the sun comes up, the air is dry and those temperatures start to race upwards. It will be a warm afternoon. We got up to 90 yesterday. I see no reason why we shouldn't be right back there again today. Dew point is at 55. Northwesterly winds at about three miles per hour and temperatures now up to 60 in comfort. Closing in on 70 at the airport, 73 stents in 68 New Braunfels. We're at 65 Kennedy and some 70s for Catula and Corpus Christi. Two point tracker. We've been talking about the dry air. It is here. It is settling in. It'll be here for a few days. And then by the time we get into the weekend, it starts to rise a little bit. I, I still think Saturday is okay. Sunday, you will start to notice the humidity a little bit more. That'll lead to some clouds and then maybe a couple showers Monday, although it doesn't look great for rain. I'll tell you that just looking at the extended forecast. What you'll notice here on the water vapor is this big spin right here. That's an upper level low out ahead of it. There's a lot of good moisture, so some pretty heavy rain stretching from Atlanta back down towards the Florida Panhandle. We're on the back side of it where the air is dry and there is uh, very little in the way of cloud cover, if, if any. Uh, so we're going to see clear skies, I think, here across Texas. You'll notice we're sort of flanked by rain here. Uh, showers and storms out ahead of that low and then more rain out to the west, places like Phoenix, Las Vegas, parts of California, which certainly can use the rain. Our forecast looks like this. We'll top out near 90 and then fall off into the 60s pretty quickly by midnight with another cool morning on the way. And as we look down the line, dry air sticks with us, as I mentioned, even as high pressure builds in over the weekend. By the way, Saturday, our ridge pipe pressure moves in. That means some pretty toasty temperatures. Right now we're going 92. It could be a little bit warmer than that. Uh, as that high pressure moves in that won't stay very long and by Sunday we start to see some of that uh, transition from a little bit more to, to an active pattern with some rain chances I mentioned on Monday. Seven day forecast very quiet through Saturday 92 Saturday 93 Sunday as humidity returns and then a 20% chance of rain Monday high of 91 guys like the cool mornings should be nice. Thank you Justin. Yeah. 919 about 70 degrees. Officials are estimating that over 400,000 gallons of oil are sitting in the ocean off the coast of California right now. Coming up in morning headlines, what experts think happened and what comes next in this emergency. In your morning headlines, protests get destructive in New York and more on that Amtrak train shooting in Tucson, Arizona. Oil spill details and a fire in the sky. David Sears is here with your other morning headlines. Good morning. All I can think of was deep purple smoke on the water, fire in the oh, sky. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know if that relates or not. We'll find out. Let's take it to New York City. That is a mobile COVID-19 testing site, and those are anti-vaxxers who are protesting. And when you mix the two, Bad things are going to happen. A couple of the protesters decided to tear things up. First, they yank the table over while the guy's just sitting there. Then they flip a chair and then they decide they're going to bring the whole tent down. One guy's swinging the legs around. And if you'll watch this in just a second, you'll see he's not paying any attention to what he's doing. He's just too worried about destructing. And watch the guy in the yellow hat. Bam, nailed him in the head. Police finally arrive. They don't arrest anybody, just get them to move on. The tent gets set back up, nurses get back to work. People who are against anti-vaccines are upset since New York's Department of Education vaccine mandate 
just went into effect. Now this is tragic. This is an Amtrak train stopped at a station in Tucson, Arizona. A routine check for guns, money and drugs taking place. Shots are fired. An officer and canine approach the train, step on. And then a few seconds later, you'll see him run off that train. He runs for cover with his dog. We'll show you that again in just a second. When the officer takes off, you can also see a man at the door shooting at the officer. Here's that sequence for you. Yeah, as we roll it again, you can see some people who are just walking by. They seem like they're really don't know what to do. And then all of a sudden, when he gets on the train, they figure something bad is happening. So watch them. They just kind of take off with that luggage cart down there and hide behind that with some other folks. The man shooting, the main shooting took place on the upper level of that double decker train. There were two suspects. Here's the sad part. Some 50 officers got to the scene. One DEA agent was killed. Another agent is in critical condition and a Tucson police officer is also in stable condition. One suspect is dead. The other is in custody. All right, let's take you to Southern California coast. Orange County now under a state of emergency after that underwater oil pipeline leak. The estimate is 144,000 gallons of oil spilled out. Patches of oil can be found from Huntington Beach to Laguna Beach. It is an ecological mess. Oil is in the water, on the beach, on the wildlife. Authorities are trying to figure out exactly what happened. One possibility, an anchor from a ship hit that oil pipeline. Since that we have examined more than 8,000 feet of pipe, um, and we have isolated one specific area of significant interest. Now, there is some controversy on when the slick was first spotted. A person on a ship said they saw a sheen on the water Friday night, but the Coast Guard wasn't notified until Saturday morning. The spill is now a criminal investigation as well. Taking to Colorado, several security cameras and doorbell cameras caught an unusual sight, a fireball coming right out of the sky. Yeah, there are about 41 people who saw the fireball reported to the American Meteor Society. Several of those folks said they also heard a big boom. Chris Peterson runs a private observatory. That means this actually did get quite close to the ground. It's unusual for such a large object, and I'm guessing that it was something on the order of a ton of rock, probably. You know, it is that kind of an event of a lifetime, something, an amazing little piece of nature that you should relish having seen. Chris said if something does make it to the ground, it is between the size of a piece of gravel and a baseball, and it would be black. So I say we get that kid from yesterday who found that tooth. <laughs> the mastodon, the mastodon tooth. tooth and send him to Colorado. See if he can find one of these uh, meteor rocks. Why not? He's our new Indiana Jones. I was yeah. Be, was he a paleontologist or an archaeologist? Something like in that. In waiting. Yes. So there you go. See it's always a there. trip when you see those videos. And night turns to day for just a matter of seconds. But once again, doorbell cameras. Doorbell yes. cameras. Yep. Good video. They're practically selling themselves. They are. Thank you very much, David All Sears. Right. More ahead on GMSA at 9. A look at building the ofrenda as we prepare to celebrate Dia de los Muertos. Plus, free season basketball is back. Spurs hitting the court and getting a W. We have highlights of the victory coming up. Good morning. It is National Customer Service Week. We are here at 311, basically the customer service of the city of San Antonio, okay, so giving you an inside look, explaining way. how it all works. 9.30, welcome back to GMSA. This week, Customer Service Week. And here in San Antonio, 311 basically works as the city's customer service hotline. Max Massey joins us live at the 311 call center. And Max, a lot of calls already this morning. That is right, guys. They average more than 2,300 calls a day. Already this morning, more than 200 calls. We're joined here with Paula, the director of the 311 call center. So, Paula, how does this all work? Well, you've got a city concern and you don't really know where to start. Start with 311. You can give us a call. We're open seven days a week and we will help you with whatever city services and information you might need. And we've done reports on people being frustrated that their calls haven't been responded to immediately. So what is your recommendation to people who might be frustrated? We want to work with the community in resolving whatever concern that you might have. So we definitely ask you to give us a call back. Let's figure out. Let's troubleshoot it let's investigate it more let's determine what we need to do to make sure that your concern does get addressed now people watching this they might say oh maybe my concern doesn't pertain to 301 what kind of stuff do you guys deal with we deal with overgrown yards any city services and information whether you might be even wanting to register for the better uh the train for jobs the say program or 
uh, maybe there's a junk vehicle in your area or a pothole or a street repair, sidewalk repairs, all of those city services and programs, um, we uh, are here and we can take your uh, information and we, get, we can get it processed and facilitated. Now, this is not a new program, but you've seen it evolve over the last decade. What have you seen? We have. We've actually been around for over 21 years. Um, and really what we have seen grow now is different channels, such as the mobile app, um, our 311 SA mobile app, or even web portal. If you want to be able to just take care of it yourself on your own, go online and you can take care of it. But otherwise, we're here available seven days a week and ready to help you with whatever questions you might have. All right, Paula, thank you so much. And it was it was funny, guys, before we were talking and they were talking about, you know, even if you don't want to talk to anyone on the phone, if you don't want to call 301, you can just deal with the mobile portal, everything like that. You do it all on your phone, guys. Thank you, Max. I know it comes in handy when you call, somebody's answering, and that's a great feeling. Thank you, Max. Outside with live cam, a terrific Tuesday out there weather-wise. It is warming up. Here's Justin. Yeah, it is a beautiful shot there. We got clear skies that allowed temperatures to drop down last night, and uh, we've got some pretty comfortable numbers right now. It's not going to stay that way. It will get pretty toasty this afternoon. Great picture on our KSAC Connect. We got a lot of pictures in last evening with these cirrus clouds coming across the sky, made for some beautiful colors. The grand finale. As R. Garcia puts it, I agree. That is beautiful. It's like fireworks there in the sky. Lows this morning down to 61 in San Antonio, 59 Randolph, 57 Hondo, 55 in Carrizo Springs, 57 out towards Eagle Pass. A lot of places in the 50s this morning. And we'll see another round of that tomorrow morning. At the moment, we made it into the 60s and 70s. You'll notice there is very little cloud cover. You may see a few clouds if you're up towards Kerrville, but that is it. Otherwise, clear skies for everyone else. We'll see a lot of sun today, and that will boost those temperatures. By noontime, I think we're up to 85, so we're gaining 20 degrees plus here by the lunch hour. Yeah, 89, 3 o'clock, 90 by 5 o'clock. Sunny skies, northerly winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. Guys? Thank you, Justin. Almost exactly 30 minutes after Stephen Cavazos joined us to update us on some traffic problems. Things are looking really good right now. That last shot was I-10 out by the rim, and there's 35 southbound at Maine, U.S. 90 at 36th Street. KSAT 12 presents another Day of the Dead story, Building the Ofrenda. Ofrenda means offering, and on November 1st, these altars welcome back our loved ones to the world of the living. They're built with many pieces and parts, and each of them has a specific purpose. For the Aztecs, earth, wind, water, and fire were nature's four elements, and they're very important when building an ofrenda. These elements symbolize the world of the living, and they help call back our loved ones on Dia de los Muertos. To represent the earth, include their favorite foods, flowers, and salt. For the wind, hang some papel picados to wave in the breeze. To quench a spirit's thirst, put out a glass of water. And lastly, there's the candle. Once lit, it represents fire and the soul. To commemorate Hispanic Heritage Month, we are calling all KSAT kids to show off their artistic skills for a chance at winning an iPad mini. You just need to download a picture of a calavera or skull, print it, decorate it, and then upload it to KSET.com. And my daughter Rooney wanted to share her artwork, hoping to encourage more kids to enter. Hi, I'm Rooney, and I want to show you how to enter the Dia de los Muertos coloring contest. Gotta make it colorful. Mm. I'm getting more colors. We need more light colors. These are different, you see? It looks like a tree, so I'm gonna make it like a tree green-ish. To me, it's a tree, but people see it different ways, right? Okay, I wanna color the eyebrows purple. I think that's the right color, don't you think? Seriously, I think this is cool. If you want, you might have, you can color the skeleton, but usually skeletons are white. That looks good, right? What else am I missing? <gasps> oh! Oh, now I know I'm missing this, right? Okay. I have Muertos 2021. Yeah. Green and green. We haven't used green in a while. Upload to KSAT.com and KSAT will show your work.
And your kids can show off their artistic skills for a chance at winning an iPad Mini. The contest runs through again through Friday. Some of the best submissions will be featured in the KSET Kids newsletter and right here on GMSA at 9. We're going to have all that information on KSET.com. But after that, after they, uh, you know, they turn it in, there's a drawing. Mm -hmm. So it's not like... <laughs> You're seeing me move my hands like my daughter Rooney. <laughs> so the, more she got it the best, the best submissions, and then they'll have a drawing. So it's not like our team, web team, is actually just picking one. Right. Yes. May I say something? Yes. Happy birthday to Rooney. Oh, thank you. Yes. yes. Thank you. Today is her birthday, so she is Rooney is not eligible for a iPad Mini because Why not? Her, her parents work here. But oh, yeah. it is her birthday today, so a uh, happy birthday, Rooney. We love you so much. I can't believe she's eight years old. I know, right? Yeah, happy birthday, Rooney. I've, I've told our producer, Dylan, and I'm going to pitch it one more time, that we can turn half of the show over to Rooney on Fridays. <laughs> I think it'll be... Uh, Give us a break. It will sell very well. It will do very well in this market, <laughs> and, and Rooney's all kinds of awesome. So, so from 9.30 to 10, starting on Fridays, all Rooney... <laughs> All the time. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> time now is 9.37 and about 71 degrees. Sign her to a contract now. <laughs> preseason basketball is back. Spurs had their first preseason game, uh, their home opener last night against the Jazz, and they got a big win, guys. RJ and David are coming up with highlights still ahead. San Antonio Spurs over the preseason with a big win over the Utah Jazz. Yay, David and RJ are in the studio with a recap and a big game from their rookie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. primo power, David. You guys remember where you were when you were 18 <laughs> years old? Not on the court. <laughs> think about this one for a minute. Not even at a Spurs game. Not even right. at a Spurs game. Mm -hmm. Do you remember? Uh, I do. Vaguely, yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Definitely not playing in the NBA. He's going to yeah. remember where he first. was when he yeah. was 18 in his first NBA game. Yeah, yeah. Good stuff here from Josh Primo yeah. as the Spurs open up preseason there against Utah. Jakob! And uh, big man right there, Jakob Hurdle, uh, had a nice game on the boards. Ten rebounds for Jakob. The Spurs uh, really coming out. And remember, Pop said earlier this during media day that they were going to be up and down. There are no ball stoppers on this team. No, so they got they got up and down the floor. Of course, they couldn't hit a broadside of a barn in the first half. They shot like 37 percent, but it was yeah. the first half of the first preseason game, so we'll forgive them for that. And yeah. then they turned it on the second half. Took and, a lot of threes. Uh, got to make them. Yeah, got to got to make them. <laughs> and they, I think they shot like uh, 35 percent from three. That's mm -hmm. where they finished. They shot 47 percent for the game, so that's not bad. Yeah, First Keldon Johnson, uh, yeah. Keldon Johnson there, 10 points overall. And then we were talking about Josh Primo here. Came off the bench, played a little bit later on in the game, fourth quarter, and he uh, absolutely lit up the scoreboard, David. The guy was 7 of 8, mm -hmm. and he was 3 of 4 from three-point range. And he's 18. Did I say that? <laughs> we have said that. What yes. were you doing when you were 18? Right? He's still 18, right? Mm -hmm. and, yeah. And yes. Yeah. Pretty I, amazing. This will be interesting so. to see how long he stays in Austin. Whether they uh, play him a little bit more. I think like he's I, I, he's instant offense off the bench against really young. But uh, yeah, I really like what we've seen out of him so far in training camp and as we move along here. Do you guys think our fellow Spurs fans realized there was a game last night? I'm seeing a lot of empty seats <laughs> in some of these shots. <laughs> well, but it is preseason. It's preseason. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's preseason. Yeah, it's preseason, and apparently a lot of people didn't know where to stream the game. It was on the Spurs app, mm -hmm. so if anyone maybe is checking out this next game, yeah. We, we need to go. We need to go in person. Yeah. Go down yeah. there. Yeah, well, next, um, next one's out of town, isn't it? It is out of town. Yeah, they're at I mean, Detroit. You can go to Detroit week. if you'd like. Go on. <laughs> I have the Spurs I'll wait. app. Let us I'll know when you get back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. I have the app, so I get the alerts on my phone. Um, DeJounte Murray also finished yeah. with 17 points along with Josh Primo. And here are the two talking about uh, the big win last night against Utah. Play together. Uh, and that's one thing that we've been working on in uh, open gym to training camp is, you know, sharing the ball uh, and want the best for your teammate, you know, because there's all we all got the same goal, which is win. Just a different atmosphere. Um, I did this a little bit during summer league, but being out there um, with the fans and everything like that, our fans, it was an amazing feeling. And uh, my teammates just made sure that I was that I was confident going out there, and the fans made it easy. So. Mm. 
I'm, I'm he sorry. He looks 18. I, no, he, I he know looks we like keep he's on about 15 the if here. you want to know the truth. He doesn't look 18. Looks like he's 15. Uh, looks, looks like we just went sure? over to one of the high schools yeah. and did an interview with one exactly. of the Exactly. Like, he shouldn't be playing for Wagner or something <laughs> like that. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> no insults intended. We're just, you know, you just look like a I, young guy, okay? So we're all old yeah. and we're all jealous. So and can't and play here was the thing with Josh Primo is that a lot of people, when the Spurs took him in the draft, were really surprised. But I think what the Spurs were doing was that a lot of these experts were saying that next year he would have been a top five pick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Once he kind of developed or got another year under a system, came out a little bit early, Spurs kind of took the gamble, and so far it looks like uh, it might be paying off. You know how Pop is yeah. and, the, and the Spurs yeah. are. I mean, he'll end up at Austin a lot, but he could very well see some uh, significant playing time if he keeps playing like that. We'll have to see. I mean, it was his first game. He's, 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 a, you know, he's a rookie. He's young, and, mm -hmm. and yeah. he's got a long way to go. But the way they're I mean, you know. We'll see. <laughs> this could be fun to watch. And yeah. by the way, uh, could be. Doug yeah. McDermott was yeah. in the starting lineup last night. So that's the big change for the starters. No, um, what's that guy's name? DeMar. I said, we forget about those people once they leave. DeMar DeRose. <laughs> DeMar DeRose. That He's guy. With the Bulls. You yeah. know that other guy that used to play here? He's in a commercial. <laughs> I saw him in a, in a TV commercial the other day. I, about, I was floored. Which other guy? I, I can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Just, you'll see it one day. Okay. He used to play here. No, I'm, yeah, really, yeah, I'm really curious. curious. He used, he used to now. play here. Yeah. The first, his first hmm. name starts with a K. Oh, oh is it, that is guy. Is it Mr. Leonard? Quiet Leonard. Oh. oh. Anyway, I, he was the commercial? Really? I thought it was him. I'm pretty oh. sure it was him driving but, the car. Mm. We were talking about well, it, but we it, moved on from all of that, yeah. right? That's yeah. 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 Right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. It, it definitely wasn't an HEV commercial, I'm sure. Oh, no, no, no. What? Well, Primo <laughs> picks. Here we go. They got <laughs> the perfect branding. Josh Primo. Primo. Well, that's the big question. That's, that is the preseason question. Who will be in the HEV commercials yes. and how funny will they be? It's got to be Primo. Yeah. I think they need to bring Tim and Manu back because they're they're, oh, you know, they're hanging around course, the practice. Yeah. That would be fun, but we've got a new crowd. So maybe DeJounte Murray, Kelvin Eric, Johnson. Yeah. Keldon's yeah, funny. Uh, Keldon's yeah. funny. Keldon's funny. He's, yeah. yeah, he's, he's a character. He's yeah. the, he's I get to him going all out with those. Cool. So, yeah. <laughs> all right. So first win under our belt. First win. Even though it is asterisk. Oh, yeah. That's okay. Yep. A win is a win, right, David? Yeah, there she yeah. goes. Yeah, a win's a win. <laughs> all right. RJ, David, thank you guys. <laughs> Preseason, <laughs> Steph. Don't get excited. Oh, let me have my moment. <laughs> let her get a little excited. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you. Let's go ahead and talk to Justin now. Hey, I'm excited. I'm with See? you, Steph. I'm feeling good about this year. Thank you. Yeah. Of course, I've said that like the last five years, but I really <laughs> Really do. I, I like these, these young guys. Yeah. Hey, I, uh, we've been saying bless you in the newsroom, I feel like, 100 mm -hmm. times today. Uh, a lot of people sneezing. Yeah. Let's look at those allergens. They're really up today. Uh, uh, mold was up there, but also ragweed and fall elm. So the season for fall elm and ragweed, we're kind of in the midst of it. We typically see fall elm start to come down some in October. Ragweed sticks around, though, until we see our first big freeze. So that typically takes until about... November. So just a heads up, these numbers are still going to be elevated here probably over the next month or so. Those are our fall allergens. Outside, we've got clear skies. 69 at the airport, 73 Stinson, 68 Kelly, 67 at Randolph. We were off to a really comfortable start this morning. We started off in the 50s and 60s, but we've rebounded. 61 Comfort, 70 Rio Medina, 72 Castroville, 74 Pleasanton, 68 in New Braunfels. And uh, 72 Kennedy, 74 Catula. You'll see these numbers all into the 70s, I think, within the next hour or two, and then eventually 80s by the lunch hour. Dew points, they're not bad. They're in the mid 50s, so we're in the pleasant category. There are a few spots as you get down to the south, places like Laredo, where it's still a little bit muggy, but that moisture stays to our south. This dry air. Uh, will be with us for the next couple of days. And as a result, we'll see those high temperatures in the afternoon jump up to pretty warm numbers. 90 degrees is what we're forecasting here in San Antonio. And then the, the temperatures fall off quickly in the evening hours. And we'll see another great morning coming up tomorrow. As we look at the big picture here across the country, Texas is really quiet. We're sort of flanked by two storm systems here. One that's producing quite a bit of rain across parts of Georgia and Florida, and then some good rain in the desert southwest, a place that really does need the rain. So it's good to see that. And uh, that really is about it. You go to the northern tier states and things are pretty quiet right now. Temperature wise, there's nothing that really jumps off the map here. There are some 40s and 50s. You would expect that in the Rocky Mountains, 60s and 70s here in Texas. The warm stuff's down there in Florida, but nothing that shows that we're going to get a big cold front or a big surge of cold air or anything like that. This is pretty typical 
fall weather. Our future cast shows that that area of low pressure that is producing rain across the southeast stays east of us. So we're on the dry side of things and then high pressure in the upper levels moves in by Saturday. That'll keep things warm. And then after that, the pattern does change a little bit. I think by Monday, we could start to see a few showers back in the forecast as moisture returns. So your seven day forecast is a quiet one the rest of the work week. 92 Saturday, humidity returns on Sunday, which adds some cloud cover, and then we'll put in a 20% chance of rain on Monday, guys. Thank you, Justin. We want to take you live to D.C. Breaking news coming in the newsroom. We had something like this happen back in August, and apparently it's happening again. U.S. Capitol Police are investigating a suspicious vehicle in front of the U.S. Supreme Court along First Street Northeast. In the tweet, Capitol Police are asking that people stay away from that area. This, this is a developing story, and we will keep an eye on it. And we're going to bring you any updates coming up at the news at noon. We'll be right back. Coming up at noon, another edition of New You, a health and wellness series exploring unique ways to live healthy. So far, we've talked stress management, exercising your brain, even exercising on the back of a horse. Today, David Sears heads out to a well-known spot in San Antonio for the perfect backdrop for an outdoor workout. We love to be outside, um, especially during COVID. It's really showed us that, you know, we can think outside the box. We can get outside and do things and still be fit without in the constraint, being in the constraints of a gym. Tune in today at noon and learn all about Trek and Tone and where you can find it. It's a piece of Mexican culture that had been covered up for more than a decade. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll give you a look at it tomorrow on GMSA. And another quick look at the rose with Trans Guide. Things were a little, uh, I guess, packed earlier, but right now it looks better there at 281 and Hildebrand. Things are looking good. And also there at Loop 410 and San Pedro Avenue. Looked like there was a fender bender there on the exit ramp. For at, Hildebrand. Uh, 481 at Hildebrand. Oh, mm -hmm. I didn't see that. Oh, yeah. Well, right yes. there on that le left shoulder. I was seeing things moving on the outer. Yep. That's approaching Hildebrand coming off of 281 northbound. Justin. Yes. Uh, sunny skies out there, as you can see there. Uh, 90 degrees, the high temperature today. We'll be right around 90 all the way through the rest of the work week. The one change that comes to our forecast arrives early next week with a slight chance of rain. Uh, credit to uh, Dylan, uh, our, exec our, our producer. Uh, he found us this story. The headline, Got Gas? Poor Mental Health May Be the Reason You're Breaking Wind. <laughs> It's a real story. It's a, hey. so, breaking wind ranks as the most common gas-related stomach issue. That's according to a new study. However, the cause of all this flatulence may surprise you. So re researchers say a poor quality of life, stress, anxiety, and depression appear to be to blame for several gas-related symptoms. Study finds more than four in five people named breaking wind as the most common stomach issue. Other gas-related symptoms include stomach rumbling, belching, and bad breath. A survey of nearly 6,000 people in the U.S., the United Kingdom, and Mexico finds trapped wind, what? <laughs> abdominal distension <laughs> slash swollen tummy, and bloating slash abdominal pressure are also common ailments. So only 11.1% of the poll reported experiencing no gas symptoms at all during the 24-hour period the survey examined. On average, respondents dealt with three different gas issues across the 24-hour window. You have to go much deeper into the study to yeah. loop everything together between gas-related issues and your mental health, but we're going to take their word for it that if you're upset about something, that you may have some issues that you've kind of internalized and that may manifest itself in different ways. Yeah, I guess it makes sense. Like your stomach hurt. Stomach can hurt hurt, but mm -hmm. all the other stuff, well, yeah. <laughs> and that's about all we have to say about that. <laughs> yeah, have a great day, guys. <laughs>